This is one of the most important topics that I have ever presented on this channel. Rage and all the mechanisms around it. I will try hard to make this video worth your time, because there is a bit of math in here, which I will break down in the easiest way possible and you will learn why this talent right here, Feral Nature, is probably the single most useless talent in Rise of Kingdoms. I will explain you what the base rage and the rage compensation factor are and which is the limit rage you can accumulate each turn. Everything I say will be 100% tested and verified in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Hello gamers and welcome back to Wig Gaming. This is an extremely important video for me. I will tell you everything you need to know about rage. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? What is the rage? We can define the rage as your mana, the energy you accumulate each turn in order to be able to cast your active skill. Most of the commanders have a rage requirement of 1000, with some exceptions having higher or lower activation points. Examples are Edward of Woodstock, who requires 1350 rage to cast his active skill, while commanders like Genghis Khan or Zhang Yu have lower requirements, lowered even further by skill effects, which combined together can have a minimum activation point of 750 rage, if you pair Zhang Yu with Genghis Khan, for example. The base rage can be accumulated with your normal attacks. This base rage accumulation can be boosted by some talents which I like to define base rage talents, BRT, such as Burning Blood, Undying Fury and Razor Sharp, and other talents which I call conditional rage talents, CRT, like Rejuvenate, or Feral Nature, which will activate once certain conditions are met, like casting a skill or triggering a random possibility. We have then some active commander's skills which will boost the rage accumulation, such as in the case of Joan of Arc and Trajan, and some other passive commander's skills, among which there are YSG's second skill and William's fourth skill, which are both passive, but they are boosting the rage in different ways. YSG boosts himself, while William will boost allied troops. Finally, another way to gain more rage is through some pieces of equipment. Two, in the specific, the Horn of Fury, which has a chance to grant your own troops 50 extra rage, and the Karak Sword Drum, which has a chance to grant up to two allied troops 50 extra rage. By the way, there is probably an issue with the Karak Sword Drum, but this is not the video to talk about it. I have quickly told you all the ways you can boost your rage in order to cast your active skill, but how can we calculate the value of the base rage, so the rage we get each turn from our normal attacks? Even if you use the same commanders and the same troops, one player will inevitably cast the skill before the other. That's because one player is losing the fight, while the other is winning. Rise of Kingdoms has a hidden mechanism, which I called Rage Compensation, that consents the losing side to accumulate rage at a faster pace comparing to the winning side, in order for the winning player not to capitalize too much on the troop differential, because we know that more rage equals to more damage, and this will eventually create a snowball effect. So I came up with one of my usual simple tests to create a totally controlled environment, me and my friend Always Ultra here, who I thank for the help, have two markswomen on the field. Both of us have the Ottoman civilization, our VIP 17, no city skin, no talents applied on the commanders, no extra buffs, the kingdom's newspaper has some gathering speed, and we scouted each other in order to have war frenzy. We are battling outside alliance in our home kingdom and outside any territory that could influence the outcome. The result is predictable. When I start attacking him, we both deal the same exact damage and cast our skills at the same time. We eventually die in the same turn, killing each other off. When we open up the report, you can see that everything looks the same. Slightly wounded units, severely wounded units, etc. And if we take a look at the troop buffs, everything looks exactly the same as well. Opening the battle log, we can also see that we cast the active skills in the same turn, turn 11. This means that we accumulated the necessary rage in the first 10 turns and we fired the skill off in the following turn, 
as you can read by yourself in the log. You stack up your rage, and when you reach the required amount, the next turn the effect will take place. This means that it took us both 10 turns to accumulate 1000 rage. So the base rage in Rise of Kingdoms in a neutral situation, it means when you're not losing or winning, is 100 points per turn. And what happens if one of us is losing? At this point, I asked Always Ultra to use a boost token and he activated the 5% defense token. We start the battle and obviously you can notice that I am losing from the very first turn. One thing to notice though is that from the very first cycle our skills are not firing off together anymore. I am firing one turn earlier on turn 10. Let's open up the battle lock and we can easily determine that I accumulated the required rage in 9 turns instead of 10, while it took my opponent still 10 turns to accumulate the required rage. The result is that I fired off my skill on turn 10, while he fired off his skill still on turn 11. 1000 rage divided by 9 turns is 111.1 periodic. It means that I gained at least 111.1 periodic rage per second in this battle, but still it has to be less than 125 rage per second, otherwise I would have accumulated 1000 rage in 8 seconds, because 1000 divided by 8 is exactly 125. So we can say with mathematical certainty that my rage accumulation, which we will call x, is between 111.1 periodic included and 125 excluded. I highly doubt that the rage works with decimals, so we can say between 112 and 125, with the upper number always excluded. Now, I wanted to narrow down this interval. How to do that? Well, I picked Mark's woman for a reason. She has no randomness on her skills, so nothing can happen during the battle which we cannot predict, and I can also reach two base rage talents, BRT, without passing by other talents that would randomize the battle itself, being those razor sharp on the archer tree and burning blood on the skill tree. Both me and my opponent actually use this talent tree in the test battle when we died at the same time. The same would have happened without talents, because our stats are exactly the same. Now, my idea to narrow down this interval is, my opponent will keep this talent tree plus the 5% defense boost token, which will still put me on the losing side, and I will start adding the two base rage talents one single point at a time, with steps of three rage each. I will go through 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 and 18 rage. Well, 15 will be already enough because I am the losing side and I accumulate at least 112 rage per second, plus 15 we already go over 125, which is the requirement to reach 1000 rage in 8 turns. I now put 1 point on burning blood here, so I will gain additional 3 rage more than my opponent, other than the compensation itself. If this extra 3 rage will tip off my march and I cast 1 additional turn earlier, so 2 turns before my opponent on turn 9 instead of 10, accumulating 1000 rage in 8 turns, it will mathematically mean that my base rage as losing sight is between 122 and 125 per second. If 6 rage will tip my march off, it means that my base rage is between 119 and 122 per second. If 9 rage will do that, then it's between 116 and 119 per second, etc. You got the point. This was the first battle with only 3 rage applied on burning blood and with my surprise, I accumulated my full rage one additional turn earlier. Mathematically, this means that my opponent is gaining 100 rage per second, while I am gaining between 122 and 125 rage per second. I do not have any other way to narrow this interval further down, but since it cannot be 125, otherwise I would accumulate in 8 turns without needing the extra 3 rage, and since I highly doubt the rage system works with decimal numbers, I can say with a high degree of certainty that the base rage as losing side is between 122 and 124 points per turn. 
From our tests, we also noticed that this rage compensation is not changing basing on the troops remaining or the number of troops you bring on the field comparing to your opponent. This effectively means that any losing side will be compensated with 22 to 24 percent extra base rage comparing to any winning side. Now the difficult part is over. Sorry if you got asleep during this explanation, it was a necessary premise for what's coming next. Every troop type with a skill tree will have two base rage talents, Razor Shop and Burning Blood for skill tree archers, like Nebu or YSG for example, and Undying Fury and Burning Blood for skill tree cavalry and infantry, like Guan Yu or Zhang Yu for example. This means that you will gain 18 extra rage per turn only from these talents. On top of that, in the skill tree you have Rejuvenate, which will grant you extra 60 rage anytime you fire off an active skill, which will happen at least 2 times per skill cycle, having 2 commanders. Then you have Feral Nature, the object of my feral criticism, I should say. I have always said to avoid this talent, and if you check any talent tree made by me on my Discord, just go on discord.gg slash wiggaming and then ask to the bot in the proper channel, there is not a single skill commander having feral nature, except maybe Edward of Woodstock. The fact is, if we sum everything up, assuming feral nature activates when you fire off an active skill, in coincidence with the activation of rejuvenate, it will be, in case of a positive battle, 100 base rage, plus 100 from feral nature, plus 60 from rejuvenate, plus 18 from the base rage talents for a total of 278. In case you are losing the battle, we are looking at least at 300 rage for that specific turn, with a maximum of 302. And you know which is the limit of rage you can accumulate each turn in Rise of Kingdoms? It is 220. Yes, you heard it correctly, 220. And this was confirmed by Lilith VIP support, by the way. This is not one of my theories, and here is the proof. Now, there is a very slim chance that Feral Nature will activate in coincidence with Rejuvenate, but the problem is another one. You have other rage boosts factors we have not accounted for yet. How many Trajan will you find on the field? How many Joan of Arc? How many Williams? And then, have you crafted a Horn of Fury? Some of your friends maybe crafted a Karak's War Drum. Each of these factors can give you 50 extra rage per second. Trajan and Joan of Arc's effects will not stack because they are both active, but active effects can still stack with passive effects, like Williams. And all of these will stack with accessories. In the perfect turn, you could eventually have 300 rage from your base and talents, then 50 from Joan, 50 from William, 50 from the Horn of Fury, and 50 from the Karak Sword Drum and maybe 100 rage from effects like YSG's second skill. This, potentially, would bring the total for that specific lucky turn to 600 rage in one turn. And for what? The limit is still 220, and none of this will be saved up for the next turn, like Lilith said. Now, nothing like that will ever happen in your entire rock experience, but do you really believe that in a field fight, with all those buffs around from such popular commanders and equipments, you will not go over 220 rage in one turn? Without feral nature, we are already looking at high numbers. Then if you consider two turns of rejuvenate in a cycle, a horn of fury, some Trajan, Joan of Arc and Williams here and there, trust me, your feral nature will be wasted most of the time at least a big portion of it. Now tell me, is it worth it to get there by spending 10 extra talents when you can invest your talent points in something really productive, like counterattack damage reduction or anything else really, stuff which you can rely on 100% of the time? Well, yeah, if you ask me, it's not really worth it. And here we have the overraging issue explained. Too much rage, just going to waste, trashed. Do you believe me now when I say that Feral Nature is probably worse than picking up a gathering talent? At least you can get some resource faster. Well, I hope this video was not too boring and covered the topic you guys were interested in. If you enjoy my content, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and activate the bell for notifications. It's 100% free and helps me out planning and editing longer and more difficult projects like this one. I will see you on the next one. Ciao!